Well, if you're a progressive in this country, you probably probably see guns as a big problem. If you're an NRA supporter, on the other hand, you may think the real problem is all those progressives, the ones who allegedly want to take your guns away. That's a big divide in our country. And with a new Republican president aligned with a Republican Congress, most gun control advocates don't expect to see that gap narrowing over the next few years. But the thing is, we don't really know where Donald Trump comes down on what are known as common-sense gun laws. And even if he has a more moderate personal stance than most Republicans, would he risk alienating his base? And why is that base so gun-shy about even contemplating any changes to the law? Back with us to talk about our culture of guns and gun violence and how a Trump presidency might affect it is psychiatrist, author, and professor at Vanderbilt University, but a Brooklynite too, Dr. Jonathan Metzl. Thanks for joining us again. Thanks so much. It's great to be back. Thanks for joining us, Jonathan. So tell us a little bit about this flip-flopping that I feel like is happening. What were Trump's prior stances on gun control? I feel like he used to support a ban on assault rifles, and now maybe that's changed. Where has he gone from old Trump to then presidential campaign Trump so far? Well, old Trump wasn't that long ago. Mm -hmm. So even, you know, four, five, six years ago, even, and it's not just in conversation, in, in his books, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Trump would write about uh, positions that are seemingly liberal now. Mm -hmm. So things like he supported an assault rifle ban. He supported uh, a background check system. He supported a waiting period uh, for uh, gun purchases, things that uh, I think have been effectively shown to reduce gun violence across the board. And maybe two, three years ago, all of a sudden, he shifted sharply to what we would call the right on a number of issues mm -hmm. and really started supporting more um, kind of strident pro-gun policies. And so people who do what I do, who study this, have kind of, you know, it's kind of a question for debate about what does it mean that Trump uh, shifted so so radically. On one hand, you could say that um, his, his views have changed, maybe, that's possible. On another hand, you could say he's making these, um, making these changes in order to um, get a, a huge supportive voting bloc. And in, in that sense, he sees these pro-gun positions as central to his hold on, on power. So I, I think, but, but I think that this, this transition really has been quite well documented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, unlike uh, Donald Trump, who has no uh, track record or voting record or any kind of experience legislating, his vice presidential pick, Mike Pence, enjoys mm -hmm. an A rating from the NRA. So does that uh, hasten some of the NRA folks? How are they feeling? Because they were promised the world. Do you think they feel secure in Trump's stance? I, I think they feel incredibly secure secure right now. I don't think Trump has wavered at all. And certainly the Trump-Pence administration and the people who are also working in that administration have been remarkably consistent, I think. I think from the perspective of New Yorkers, I think that, um, for better or worse, there are maybe seven things that we're going to see kind of coming down the pike here um, that I think have a high likelihood of coming through. Mm -hmm. uh, one is a national, what's called national concealed carry reciprocity. A lot has been made about this. But basically, the premise of this is that um, New York has its own set of gun laws, and they've been very effective right. at limiting gun violence. We have very low gun violence in the city. Um, what reciprocity means is that if you're coming from a state where that it's allowed. where it's allowed, where it's very easy, I mean, many states in the um, South and Midwest, for example, it's incredibly easy to get a, a firearm. Right. Um, and what they're going to, I think, push is this reciprocity so that people from other states can bring guns in, into New York. And I think that that's concerning for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. One is that our gun laws have been very effective. It's right. remarkable a city this size with this kind of density to have the low rates of gun violence we do. But also, the, uh, in the ideal world, what this would mean would be people who um, who would just be coming in to, to you know, tourists coming in, bringing their guns. And yeah. so everybody in New York would be like, well, just stay away from Times Square New Year's Eve or something like that. But really, the bigger picture yeah. is it would lead to a flow of unregulated guns into the city, mm -hmm. which would then disseminate. So the first thing, I think, is this reciprocity. The second issue that I think he's been very consistent on is ending what are called gun-free zones. Mm -hmm. He said, on my first day of office, I'm going to end gun-free zones. Now, gun-free zones are places like schools, military bases. Right. And they've been, again, very, very effective 
effective at lowering gun violence. Um, and he's saying that these are an affront to people's constitutional rights. And as I'm doing some research in Tennessee, these ending these gun-free zones also has a host of unintended consequences. So um, there all of a sudden is gun violence popping up in, in areas that you wouldn't expect. And it just kind of goes on from there. He's going to repeal the uh, Obama executive orders on background check systems. He's right. certainly going to extend the congressional ban on doing research to f figure out best ways to prevent gun violence. Um, and, you know, the Supreme Goodness. Court, I think, is up for grabs. And the yeah. two that seem to me the most out there is, I think there's a big push now to end, to basically legalize silencers. Um, it's called the Hearing Protection Act, because they're uh, they're saying that it's people... It's such a afraid, public yeah. issue <laughs> that we're really upset about to the hear. noise of guns. We want to so see them and carry them, but we don't want to hear them. Right. And then the final one is uh, overturning what's called the Hughes Amendment. Where there's yeah. been a, a, a kind of block on everyday citizens obtaining not not semi-automatic right. weapons, automatic weapons. So machine guns, factors like that. There's a lot of red tape to get a machine yeah. gun, Aww. and they're going to overturn that. So the, and these things seem, I mean, again, he's, they've been markedly consistent in in pushing this agenda. And even if you look on the Trump-Pence website, for example, this has been on there for months. And so I do think that these are all issues that we're going to see playing out over the coming months. There's also the question of Trump's personal stance that he seemed to have been taking on these so-called stand your ground laws that a lot of us became familiar with after some tragic events of people standing their ground. Mm -hmm. But he seems to be ready to stand behind those and even strengthen them. Certainly. And we've seen we've seen this playing out already in a number of states. I'm from Missouri initially, uh, originally, and um, we've seen in Missouri, for example, that stand your ground laws have now become kind of the law of the right. state. And I certainly think that, that um, issues like that, like the stand your ground law, are, is, are things that they're going to be pushing on a, on a national level now. How do you really strengthen those? I mean, what else needs to be added <laughs> to that? Well, it's an expansion, right? One of the things that we might be up for a challenge is I remember the Starbucks debate, where there are certain corporations in places where uh, you're allowed an open carry state, which might be got get the reciprocity in other states to say, all right, it's the law of the land, but we don't want that in our establishment. We don't feel comfortable with lattes and handguns. So do you think that corporations are going to stand up to these laws if they expand? Well, certainly one of the big debates is do do we believe in property rights or do we believe in second amendment gun rights? And mm -hmm. certainly there's a debate about which one which one trumps tr trumps which. Right now, mm -hmm. I, I think that property rights have, you know, business owners have, have been allowed to say no guns on premises, factors like that. And I, I can't really see that changing. Private property is such a core value in, right. in this country. But unfortunately, what this creates is a two-tier system in which all of the public property, which is everything from parks to public schools to public colleges, uh, things like that, have, don't have those same protections. And so, in a way, even if, I mean, certainly cer there are businesses like Starbucks, as you mentioned, and there was an issue with Walmart, for example, mm -hmm. and, and factors like that. And so, I think that that, that, that will be maintained. Um, mm -hmm. But again, it's really a, a lot, many of these things are up for grounds, particularly around issues like what's called concealed carry. Where can people mm -hmm. bring in a gun where they're not actively displayed? playing it. Right. Does Trump carry a gun? Well, he, he's given a number of interviews over the years. Uh, he gave an interview with a far-right French uh, magazine, and I wrote about this actually in The New Republic a, a couple of months ago, where he said that he carries a gun on him at all times. Uh, he, he told this very far-right uh, publication in France that, that, that now he's carrying a, a weapon with him. Now, I have not seen evidence of that, but he has made that claim in public before. Okay, can I ask you to put on your head shrinker hat for <laughs> oh, no. a moment? <laughs> I was worried about that. No, I'm just thinking about our national psychology and what it means to have a person who's the leader of the free world say, oh yeah, I carry a gun with me all the time. When we've seen so many uh, instances of hate crimes that people would connect to Donald Trump saying people feel emboldened mm -hmm. by his administration and what their platform was during the run up to the election. Mm -hmm. So do you think that we're in for a sea change with our national psychology about guns and our relationship to them? Well. 
it's a complicated question, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are many, so in other words, our, our relationship to gun, there are many people who are un, under the framework of that. I've done a lot of research in Missouri, for yeah. example, looking at the impact of what it means to have people carrying guns in everyday interactions. And part of what I found was a true racial divide mm -hmm. among uh, among different communities in Missouri. And so most of the white Americans that I spoke to uh, who were pro kind of open carry, they envisioned themselves as kind of good guys with guns and they thought they were protecting people, but they didn't. They don't want me to have a gun. Though. They don't want you to have a gun, basically. They envisioned people like themselves yeah. who, were, who were open carry uh, advocates. And they, they, they said it was for protection, but there was a level of intimidation walking around in public, particularly with long guns and, and factors like that. Now, the people from the African community, American community that I spoke to all felt like this intimidation was directed at them, that if mm -hmm. they tried to carry weapons, um, they would be, you know, it's mm -hmm. just not a good idea to walk around uh, with a gun if you're a, a black man and yeah. factors like that. But also, they felt that this intimidation was, was directed at them. And there's historical precedent for that. If we look at our gun laws, going back to the very birth of our country, there is a racial politics to this. Mm -hmm. And so I think that, it, in a way, what I fear about this, beyond the question of violence, is really that it, it's yet another factor among many on the list that we have right now that exacerbates our tensions, that kind of pulls us mm -hmm. apart at the seams and really plays to our, our, our worst parts, not our good angels. Oh, Dr. Well, Jonathan, thank that's you so, thanks for so us much again. for joining us. Yeah, please, please come help. back once we know a little bit yeah, more. This will be an ongoing <laughs> story for the yeah. next mm -hmm. four years. Absolutely. <laughs> thanks, thank you.